Right, you guys, today we're taking a look at the Ghost Spectra Windows 11 Superlight version. Now, I can't validate this version of Windows 11 because it's been created by someone else, so I take no responsibility or endorse this software if you use it. This video is for educational purposes only and should only be used in a virtual machine, in my honest opinion. So why do I say that? Because we can't validate where this has come from or what is inside of it. If someone has got the ability to create something like this, they've also got the ability to add in backdoors and other particular types of malicious code. And there's no way of testing any of this stuff. And uh, that's the reason why I would put that particular warning on there. Now, when you go to install, there is four versions that you can choose from. Windows 11 Pro Compact. This comes without Windows uh, Defender. Also, we've got Windows 11 Pro Compact Plus Defender that comes with Windows Defender installed on there. And Windows 11 Pro Super Lite that has everything ripped out of it. There is no telemetry, no bloatware, no nothing inside there. And again, probably no Defender. And it's going to be super lightweight. And there is one there with Windows 11 uh, Pro Super Lite Plus Defender. I'm going to go with the Super Lite version here and we'll get this installed and we'll take a look at what people are talking about. Now, if you're running a very old computer with very old hardware, then obviously Windows 11 is not going to be supported for that. But because this has had all of the guts ripped out of it, it's basically going to allow you to install it. Now, should you install it? No, I would not endorse you use this software because you have no way of verifying the safety of the ISO and of course what is embedded in it, the operating system itself. Now I'm not saying there is anything wrong with it, I just don't know because you can't verify it. And also, it's just not good practice to install uh, operating systems that have been created by random people on the internet. And if you do want to use a Windows Lite version, then either use the official one from Microsoft, or you can create your own. And it's pretty straightforward and easy to do, and that way you'll know 100% that it's safe to use now again there's plenty of these are available all over the internet and you just have to be super careful because you have no clue of what's inside them so you can see the cpu has got very low processes on here 92 and the utilization is pretty good and we're on a virtual machine here of course and again we'll go to the memory here and when you click on the memory you're going to see low memory usage as well uh, you can see here 1.0 on there is committed to this. And then in use, we've got 1.2 uh, gigabytes. Now, of course, this is going to go up and down the more you install stuff and use. Uh, as you start installing software, these figures will change. This is just a, a, a virtual machine. So people sort of get fascinated by these sort of stats, really. But once you start uh, installing stuff and games and things like that and using it, it's going to start going up. So, of course, I would expect these figures to be quite low. So bear that in mind before you start uh, jumping in and installing something like this. Now, there is a useful little feature here which allows you to install things uh, via this sort of toolkit. And again, you can just type the numbers in and it will go ahead and remove things and also install things. So if you want to use this feature, you can do. And uh, again, I can't verify any of this sort of stuff. So you can use this at your own risk. Now, what I did do is I went over to the guy's YouTube channel and uh, take a look at some of his content. And again, he was benchmarking this particular uh, creation that he's created. And the language was in Chinese, so I should imagine he's from China. Now, and that's not to say that the guy is dodgy. I'm just verifying that is roughly what I've seen so far. And again, I can't validate any of this stuff, so I'm not going to put my name to it. But quite a few people have requested a video on it. Now, I have made videos showing people how to create their own Windows 10 and Windows 11 Lite editions. And again, it's always best to use the ones that you create yourself. And the reason why this is, is because you know where it's come from. You download the ISO from Microsoft. And again, you remove the components that you don't want. This is probably the best way of going about doing it, rather than using some random guy's ISO off the internet, which you have no clue of what's inside there. And you go in and install it on your system, and there could be some sort of rootkit or backdoor uh, that's built into it, and you just wouldn't know. And if you're going online doing banking, you get the general picture. 
Now, remember, I'm only speculating and assuming that this can happen. So it's just uh, whether you want to use these things or not. It's all about common sense, really. And again, if I said to you, uh, download this and it's a random file off the Internet and you have no clue of where it's come from, this is how people get infected with malware, ransomware and other malicious uh, uh, stuff. So just bear that in mind. So really, you can call this a bit of an awareness video. You shouldn't really be using any OS that has been created by any one individual on the Internet without having some sort of validation to it because it's just super risky. You just can't tell uh, what could be embedded in that OS. And again, if you're using it as your main operating system, it's super, super risky. It really is. So always stick to the major uh, companies like Microsoft, uh, Mac, and, and same thing goes for, you know, these hacking toshies and stuff. If it's been created by someone else, you have no clue of what's inside there. You know, so I really wouldn't um, uh, use those sorts of things on my main system. And if I'm completely honest, once you install uh, Windows 10 or Windows 11 uh, on a brand new computer, it's pretty fast. It's not that sluggish. And again, I can't see the point in going through all the palaver of having to rip all the parts out of it and then you do a windows updates and it either breaks it or it causes other issues so just use windows for what it was meant to be when they released it yes there's loads of bloat and telemetry in there there's ways of taking it out without damaging the operating system and that's probably the path i would advise you to go down rather than going down this route anyway i think that is going to be about it for this video uh, my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. Special shout out goes to Celtic Lead, Edward Kelly, RTX Brody, PC Repair Tech, Vitality, Phil's Computer Repair, Ron Hicks, Big Daddy, Gary Belts, Mike Bigness, Jedi Buddhist, Geo Sam, Welsh Tony, and also Albert Hewson. Thanks for the support, guys. I really do appreciate it. And I shall see you on the Discord server for a chat, or I'll see you in the very next video. Thanks again. Bye for now. Thank you.